Can you hear me and see me this side okay? Yes. Okay. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Chairman, for, in, for the introduction. Uh, I'm Tomohiro Hattori from Keio University. Today, I'm going to talk about performance comparison among various methods of fixing spins in quantum annealing. This work was done in collaboration with Hirotaka Irie, Tadashi Kadowaki, and Shu Tanaka. At the beginning of my presentation, I would like to give an overview of our research. One of the methods of fixing spins called HQA, hybrid quantum annealing, is proposed by Hirotaka Irie et al. We have verified the performance of HQA using simulation and an actual quantum annealing machine. We come to three conclusions through the verifications. First, the longer the annealing time is, the better solution we can obtain in HQA. Second, there is an appropriate number of fixed spins depending on the quantum annealing time. Third, better solutions can be obtained by HQA than by original QA. Throughout the presentation, I will show you the results to arrive at these conclusions. Next, I would like to explain background. There are, many, uh, there are still many difficulties to use a quantum annealing machine. The number of qubits is one of them. The number of qubits in quantum annealing machines is still small compared to the number of spins in Ising model, which represents combinatorial optimization programs to be sold. So uh, we have to reduce the number of QS spins to be able to input into a, a, such a quantum annealing machine. To deal with uh, such uh, large programs, uh, many kinds of hybrid algorithms have been proposed. Those methods uh, can be categorized two types, decomposing and fixing spins. Most of them are based on the idea of decomposing an original large programs into sub-programs. Sub so uh, multiple iteration between crash curve and quantum solvers are required. required. At that time, uh, one of the methods of fixing spins called HQA, hybrid quantum annealing, is proposed uh, like this. HQA does not uh, require the multiple iteration. The purpose of, uh, of this research is uh, to investigate features of HQA. Next, uh, I would like to introduce HQA. The concept of HQA is illustrated in this graph. The horizontal axis shows the state of spins. The vertical axis represents an uh, energy landscape. In HQA, um, first, uh, we roughly explore the uh, solution by pre-process, pre by pre-processing, and fix spins whose value can be easily determined using a classical method. Second, uh, we precisely explore the solution by quantum annealing, and we can obtain the final solution. This is the algorithm. First, we clarify the spins into two categories, QA spins and frozen spins by a classical way. Uh, <clears throat> uh, we, uh, we input uh, the QA spins uh, into quantum magnetic machines with effect of frozen spins and we can get final state. This is uh, the example when a program size is six. We uh, get pre-processed state by fixing spins and we can reduce the size uh, from six uh, to three and we can input into the quantum annealing machine and get the results. Since the solution is obtained in this way, a multiple iteration between crash call and uh, quantum solvers are not required. Next, I would like to introduce pre-processing. 
we use mean field annealing as a pre-processing. And in, in mean field annealing, uh, we solve this equation. Tau MF represents mean field annealing time. We solve this equation with decreasing temperature of T and get, uh, get a graph like this. Horizontal axis is time and vertical axis is magnetization of spins. We consider two components, uh, absolute value at T equals at tau MF and the speed of convergence and categorize these, spin, these spins uh, into two types, uh, frozen spins and QA spins. As shown in this graph, the dynamics of QA spins magnetization uh, is more complex than frozen spins. In doing so, we extracted uh, spins whose value are not easily uh, determined by mean field annealing. Hence, uh, the loss of pre-processing is reducing size and separating spins into two types as if uh, separating a coarse grain and fine grain. This is a pre-processing setup. This equation represents annealing schedule in this research and initial temperature and final temperature is set like this. We named the, uh, the solution derived by mean field annealing uh, MF solution. This is a program setup. We solved the Ising model on an undirected uh, complete graph and choose magnetic, magnetic field and uh, spin interaction uh, from standard normal distribution. The model called uh, Shrinton Kirkpatrick model. We named uh, the solution derived by FX that amplify uh, to be the FA solution. We chose a uh, difficult programs for which a uh, main field annealing uh, could not reach the FA solution. The results were verified using Q-tip for small size programs and D-wave advantage systems at uh, 4.1 uh, for large size programs. In, in our simulation, uh, we use this uh, annealing schedules and the tau uh, QA uh, represents a quantum annealing time. Next, uh, I'm going to explain the results. This is the result about a small program uh, in simulation. The size of program is 32. This is the graph which represents energy against the annealing time in HQA. We use, uh, I use different colors for different uh, numbers of QS spins. Red is the case with the lowest number of QS spins and blue color uh, is the case when, uh, with the largest number of QS spins. Uh, from this graph, uh, in all cases, uh, we can confirm that uh, the longer the meeting time is, uh, the better solution we can get. In the short annealing time area, uh, we can get a uh, better solution when the number of QS ping is small. On the other hand, uh, long, uh, in the long time annealing area, uh, we can get the lowest solution uh, when uh, the number of QS ping is uh, li uh, relatively large. <coughs> uh, when uh, the number of QS ping is less than six, uh, the red color area, uh, uh, the solution uh, sticks to the MF solution. On the other hand, when uh, it is more, uh, the QS ping is more than uh, Eight, uh, we can get the similar solution uh, to FA solution. This result indicates that uh, by increasing the number of QS spins, uh, we can uh, get out of a local minimum and we can get better solution. We could obtain the similar result with different scale. To consider these results, uh, we investigate the minimum energy gap uh, between ground state and first excited state. This is the graph in the case the number of QS spin is uh, more than eight. 
increasing the number of QS spins uh, makes uh, minimum energy gap decreased. So uh, increasing the number of QS spins would require a longer, uh, longer needing time uh, in QA. We think that uh, there is a trade-off relationship uh, between getting a better solution and reducing energy gap decrease. This is uh, the result about a small program uh, using D-Wave Advantage. These are a program set up. We've uh, confirmed that uh, these results are similar to the simulation results. In all cases, uh, we can confirm uh, that the longer the annealing, uh, quantum annealing time is, uh, the lower the energy we can get. And uh, by increasing the number of QS pins, uh, we can get better solution. Um, I assume that uh, the energy values have not changed because uh, there was enough uh, annealing time for this program. So the uh, energy is not changed by uh, how QA is changed. This is uh, the result about a large program uh, using the wave advantage. Uh, the overall trend was similar for the small uh, case, small scale program, uh, the uh, longer the time time, uh, we can get the lower energy. And uh, by increasing the number of QS spins, uh, we can get the lower energy. But uh, there is a different point. The solution accuracy decreased when and uh, the number of QSP was increased too much. The uh, a blue line colored uh, case is uh, that. Uh, this result suggests that uh, there is an appropriate number of uh, QSP when uh, solving a, a quantum annealing machine. We will examine uh, these results in details at the next page. These are uh, box and whisker diagrams on of the previous results. This is the result uh, of dependence between uh, QS spins and uh, energy uh, in HQA. The graph uh, on the left hand uh, represents the results in short term, uh, short annealing time area at tau QA equals uh, one microseconds. Uh, the, right hand, the graph on the right hand is the result in long time annealing area, uh, tau QA equals uh, 2,000 second micro, uh, microsecond. In short time, uh, in short time, uh, short annealing time area, uh, we can obtain the lowest solution when a QS spins, the number of QS spins equals 32. On the other hand, in long, uh, long annealing time area, uh, we can uh, obtain the lowest energy when uh, the number of QS spins equals 96. From this result, uh, we found that uh, there is an appropriate number of QS spins uh, depending on the quantum annealing time. And furthermore, uh, the comparing the white uh, colored area and the red colored area, uh, and from these results, uh, we can uh, the solution from HQA in white carrier is always a better than a from original QA in red card area. This is the conclusion of this research. And the longer the quantum annealing time is, and the better solution we can obtain in HQA. And there is an appropriate number of fixed spins depending on quantum annealing time. Better solutions can be obtained by HQA than by original QA. And I think uh, these results uh, support parallel quantum annealing. If uh, it were possible to reduce the size of programs uh, using HQA and uh, use parallel quantum annealing, a further speed up and get, uh, getting high accuracy solution uh, would be possible, I think. That's all of my presentation. Uh, thank you for listening. Mm. Thank you, Dr. Hattori. Mm. Time for a few questions from the audience. Uh, a quick clarification question. Um, after you find the uh, fixed spins, 
uh, using the, the pre-processing step, do those spins that you found that way still evolve when you do quantum annealing or are they completely fixed? You are asking uh, the effect of fixing spins, right? Yes, the, the, the lowercase n QA spins. I'm sorry, the, uh, the other uh, ones, the, 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 sorry, the other ones, the frozen spins. Do the frozen spins still evolve uh, when you run the QA or are they completely frozen at that point? Uh, yes, the, uh, this is the result when the uh, number of QA spins is small and uh, uh, if the, uh, we fix the uh, opposite uh, direction uh, with the, uh, from, uh, if we uh, fix the spins uh, different from uh, FA solution, uh, the, uh, we can only, uh, uh, the uh, solution is stuck to MX solution and the, but we can uh, fix spins in a proper direction we can uh, get FA solution. But the frozen yes. spins are fixed forever. Is this, the, this is the question that uh, frozen spins are fixed. They don't move. Is this the Yes, case? yes, that's right. Okay. Uh, if I, uh, once I fixed and uh, a spin is not uh, changed and... Uh, uh, okay, okay. Now yes. I think it's clear. Uh, other quick questions? <clears throat> Uh, so I actually have a question about how you are differentiating between which spins to freeze and, and how are you actually freezing the spins and uh, differentiating between the frozen and unfrozen spins? Um, uh, uh, I use uh, this Hamitrian. Uh, I sold uh, spins and uh, uh, considering two components and uh, uh, sold spins yeah, in the in the law and we choose spins uh, from the number of index is uh, small and we this is the Hamiltonian a whole program Hamiltonian and we uh, once if we, we fix and sort uh, we get uh, this Hamiltonian and we uh, input the, this Hamiltonian into the uh, quantum annealing machine and solve the uh, program and get uh, the whole, the solution is whole program. Yeah. I, have, I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any exp explanation of why the gap goes down with the number of uh, frozen spins? So you had so a picture of the time? gap. You had a picture of the minimum gap with respect to the number of frozen spins. Mm. So I don't quite understand why it goes down. So for example, where will you put the minimum energy gap when you don't have any frozen spins? Where will it fit in that picture? Uh, this uh, minimum energy gap is the uh, uh, body fire in the uh, fix uh, Hamiltonian after fixed, and I uh, you think hmm? the uh, reason why the uh, minimum energy cap is decreased uh, is I think uh, the uh, the, uh, the uh, energy we can uh, if the uh, number of QS pins is uh, large. Uh, the the uh, many states of uh, energy uh, is uh, there is a many states of uh, there are many states of energy and uh, uh, if we but we fix spins and the uh, the energy we can the possibility uh, the 
the first excited state is changed the uh, the other state. Uh, I think so. The uh, yes, the uh, the. We can many if the uh, increasing number of Q spins, and uh, uh, we can get uh, many different uh, energy state, uh, and the and it makes uh, the uh, energy gap uh, decreased. I think. <clears throat> okay, so let, let's move okay. to the final question. Say please. Yes, I have the same question as the previous one. How, how did you separate the frozen spin and mo movable spin? Um, I separate uh, the spins using this dynamics. And I, uh, the first I consider uh, absolute value at t equals tau mf. The, uh, uh, if the, uh, the value of magnetization is small, we fix, uh, we, uh, we uh, don't uh, fix spin and we, but the, um, we fix spins, the speed of convergence and uh, is, uh, the, <clears throat> First, I consider uh, this value uh, like this, and uh, the final absolute value, we can get the one over, uh, we can get this value uh, of the, uh, this is the uh, magnetization, spins magnetizations, and we sort uh, this value. And we, uh, second, I uh, consider the speed of convergence if uh, <coughs> the, uh, Convergence is area, uh, we fix spins, uh, and we, <clears throat> in this way, uh, I uh, chose uh, spins. Uh, <clears throat> okay, I think, spins. I think we should uh, close, so let's thank uh, uh, Dr. Hattori again. Uh, <clears throat> the, the, coffee break, the coffee break is upstairs, terrace level, and we reconvene here um, around um, 5 past 11, something like this, okay?